floor is yours. All right, thank you, Rai. Hello, everyone, this is Arnold. Welcome to the TSE weekly call. This is uh, open to everyone who is interested and willing to participate. Um, there is two requirements to doing so, though. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed on the Zoom client if you're online, which I think everybody is. But um, And the other piece is the code of conduct, which I think most people know and basically requires everybody behaves decently. So with that taken care of, we can move on. We have a fairly light agenda, but uh, I thought it would be useful to still, you know, it still be worth it having a call because we started a conversation, which I think is a good one uh, last week. And I wanted to keep the discussion going. Uh, there are three quarterly reports that are overdue now. Um, I do want to point out that uh, some were posted last week and not fully reviewed by all our members. So please, if you haven't done your homework, go back and look at those uh, reports. They are linked from last week's agenda. And uh, hopefully we'll get those that are overdue now pretty soon. Is there any announcements anyone wants to make? Yes, I'd like to real quick, Arno, about the election. We, I, I just want to thank everybody who volunteered to help um, with the transparency of dealing with issues of eligibility for the election. I've gotten a lot of good feedback um, and help. Uh, we're currently now in the process of updating the eligibility lists. I've been running the scripts um, pretty much every other day for the last couple of days. Um, although I realized I've been making a mistake and not limiting it to the last year. So if you've been using the eligibility site, um, there is a very, very, very small chance that you might come back as eligible, but you may not be eligible <laughs> because you haven't contributed in the last year. I just wanna be transparent about that. I'll be fixing that today. So if you have checked in the last couple of days, um, I encourage you to check tomorrow. Um, one last time. So um, just to be certain that you are or are not eligible. And again, if there's any questions you may have about eligibility, email election at list dot, or lists.hyperledger.org. And um, that's it. Short and sweet. So when you were running the scripts, the range was not set correctly initially? That's correct. The, the default for the range is not the previous year. It's for all time. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, Tracy, for catching that. I totally forgot about the range to, um, specification for the tool. So I will be running it today with the cutoff date being the 1st of August 2019. So any contributions from the 1st of August 2019 until today will count towards eligibility and the tool will be updated sometime today. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy, for catching this. Anything else, anyone? All right, if not, we can uh, move on and get into this discussion. So let me try to restate the dis what this discussion is about. It uh, came up as uh, initially as part of the comments to against the transact uh, report, but I don't think that matters in and of itself. I think it raises an interesting question, which essentially comes down to the fact that we have a policy that basically says when a project is being proposed, if it is seen as you know, strongly tied to, a specific, to an existing project, typically a framework, um, we, will, we have agreed that we, rather than create a, yet another top level project, we would direct the submitter to talk to the maintainers of the project it relates to. And this can become somewhat what we loosely call um, sub project of that project. And we've seen quite a few of those uh, for fabric, especially over the, over the years. Um, now, the situation is, 
there are cases where we may have a project proposal that claims to, or, you know, that, that, that wants to be, uh, aims to be platform independent and therefore doesn't fall under that policy I just talked about. And so it's approved, it becomes a top level projects. And then the feature that was, you know, key to the decision just never pans out for whatever reason. And this is not about criticism or what, you know, it's about the fact that sometimes it doesn't happen and a project, maybe it originated from a specific project and never really was able to cut ties or there was just not enough volunteers to work on to support it on other frameworks. We've seen this for Composer, for instance, is a good example of that. You know, the Composer team was willing to make it non-fabric specific and we had repeatedly requests about when they would support other projects, but the the composer, uh, the original authors didn't care to support other projects, didn't have the resources to put in this, and nobody else, you know, came to work, do the work either. And, you know, we are in an open source environment where it's all volunteer based, and so you can't force people to support, you know, different frameworks. You have to, you know, get people who are interested in doing the work to do it. So the question then is, if that were to happen, what do we do? Um, it might be reason, it, I think it is reasonable to say, well, after a certain period of time, and this would have to be defined, you know, uh, it might make sense to say, okay, for whatever reason it didn't happen, we should revisit the question of whether this should remain a top level project, or if it should become a sub-project of whatever other project it depends on. So that's really the crux of the, the, the question at hand. Uh, ideally, I think, you know, it would, it would make sense to have some kind of policy that we said that says, you know, these are the criteria and this is, you know, there's a certain period of time that is predefined and after which, you know, we can look and say, okay, it's been that long, uh, this project is only tied to this one other project, we should just, you know, acknowledge that fact and move it as a sub-project. Now, it has been pointed out, I think rightfully, that, you know, we cannot take into account only hyperledger projects in, in this regard because there may be projects that are only used by one other project in, or none for that matter within the hyperledger community, but they maybe have different uses outside of Hyperledger, right? And I think Ares is one such cases where there is actually quite a bit of use outside of Hyperledger with other projects than Indy. And, uh, Same with Ursa. And Ursa, okay, that's another example. And uh, Dano pointed out that in the case of Besu, there may be, you know, uh, technologies that would fall into that where that are related to Ethereum, where there's different softwares out there that could actually share some components. And if we wanted to have that, we wouldn't want to say, well, it's only tied to Bezu. So Bezu is the only one who uses it in Hyperledger. And, you know, that would be disregarding the fact that it's used outside as well. So I think this kind of, you know, uh, uh, aspects need to take into account, but I think we could draft a policy that would make sense and that could work and would allow us to manage our projects more effectively. So that's the basis of this discussion. Now, we didn't really have time to discuss it last week because it came up just like maybe five minutes before the end. So we definitely didn't hear from many people. Uh, I, I would like to open it to everybody now and get reactions, comments. What is, how do you feel about this? Could I ask people who want to comment to please like raise their hand and use the raise their hand function so that we can have an orderly thing. And I see that uh, Nathan was the first to get his hand up. Nathan. Yeah. So one of the reasons we have a TSC is so that we can uh, have discussions and make exceptions where it's needed. So I really like the idea of having a policy that sets this kind of the standard for how we fold something back into a framework. I think that having a more aggressive cleanup on some of our project lists would help focus the, the development in the community um, and help people understand a little bit better where to go to get help um, and also help us coordinate things like releases, especially on some of these projects that just 
they're so tied to a particular dependency a library or a framework that trying to manage them outside of that is actually more difficult than just letting them um, fold into one of the, the main work streams of a different project. So I really like this idea of saying, you know, you can propose to be your own independent project. We're willing to give it a try. But if it doesn't work out, this is what we do. So I, I like the proposal that Arno is, is 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 talking about here. Of you know, if it doesn't work out after twelve months, we really should probably fold you back into the other project, just because it'll be easier for you and your developers to keep track of what's going on. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Mark. I think Mark was next. Yeah. Mark, you're on mute. Yes, I know. Sorry, I was trying to find the button. No, my thing wasn't indicating that my hand was up, so I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, I think part of this is we don't really have a structure to handle stuff like this, and maybe we need to look at the overall structure, right? We have top-level projects, and that's sort of it. You know, otherwise you just get sort of shoved under a different project um, because you're closely re related to it. So I'm wondering if we need to look at maybe different classes of projects. Um, you know, what happens if something gets put under fabric and fabric doesn't really want it, but it sort of, you know, decides it's under fabric or under sawtooth and, you know, how is, is that top level project responsible for managing this orphan that they may not want? Is that making sense? Yep. Okay, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, we've talked about a lot before, right, about different structure, and I wouldn't want to reopen that issue because of what we're talking about, to be honest. But I hear you. I mean, you know, we went through this before quite a bit, and in the end, we decided now, you know, we basically have top level projects and then whatever happens within each project is their own business. And so from a TSC point of view, it's one project. But uh, I hear you, we'll see what other people think. I think Brian was next. Yeah, um, you know, I think I think part of the, this uh, ongoing conversation as well has always been what's the cost of a high level project uh, in terms of uh, management time, in terms of TSC time, in terms of you know, call it marketing, you know, you don't want the greenhouse to be a hundred projects, you want it to be a well curated uh, set of them. And I think I, I, it's, even though I don't think Transact is really costing us a lot on most of these functions, I, I think it's still worth asking, you know, is it really a part of the Sawtooth project, right? And, um, and I think the thing to look at isn't so much dependency as correlation, uh, correlation between the development teams. Uh, I, you know, if the two teams are pretty much the same team, if their releases tend to be synchronized um, and all that stuff, then then it's probably you know useful to combine them. I'd contrast this with uh, Explorer, for example, which is a very different team from Hyperledger Fabric. Which uh, and, and I know we've tried to get support for other ledgers on Explorer. I think that path is still there. But I know the Explorer team is certainly open to it, right? Um, and, I, and I so 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 that correlation uh, and and synchrony between teams would be one of my primary criteria. Um, the other is, and this is a very subjective thing, so it's hard to, to, to know if we're being fair about it or not, but is uh, some measurement of good faith, right? Um, you, you know, if the project has a good faith intent of living up to that objective of being a multi-ledger transaction processing system, uh, and, you know, the one way you can tell is, have, do they uh, reach out to the other ledgers? Do they incorporate input from those ledgers as they're doing the architecture decisions? And even if it didn't happen the first time, there's always subsequent times for that to happen, right? Um, and so I think a valid question back to the Transact community might be, are you planning a, a, a next-gen architecture, a, a 2.0 architecture? Uh, uh, and even if that's far off, now might be the time to go to Fabric and Iroha and Indy and Burrow and, uh, and say, you know, how do we, um, you know, try to incorporate more of you into the next uh, uh, architecture cycle? It's, uh, and, and I think it should be easy to measure the true faith, uh, the, 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 the good faith uh, of, of the intent of the developers once that question is posed to them. All right. Thank you, Brian. And I will add to the cost aspect that you were mentioning at the beginning that there's also, you know, the cost to the users, and I think, you know, it was referred to earlier on as well, is that, you know, I often hear people tell me, 
what's going on with hyperleisure. There's so many projects and they don't know where to, you know, where to go and how to find their way through all the different projects. So from that point of view alone, fewer projects will make things easier. If there is a project that really depends on another one, it just makes it easier if it's part of that project and people don't, you know, are not facing more projects than they really need to know. So back on, uh, to the list, Dan is next. Hey, uh, so I think on that last point with Transact specifically, that community has always said, hey, we're not trying to recruit end users, so there shouldn't be a point of confusion on that, uh, or there, there wouldn't necessarily be a point of confusion on that. So the issue of guiding prospective users or developers through our portfolio is, I think, a little bit orthogonal to this one. Um, we should have the the people who introduce others to the community should have ways to to guide people through. Uh, I don't think that we would necessarily want to limit the number of of projects that we have uh, just for that reason. Um, but coming back more squarely to the main issue, I, for me, this looks like other attributes of a project's charter. Is a project substantially fulfilling that charter? And right now our main mechanism is if it's not, that would be one of the criteria that says, all right, well, you're not ready for active because you're not really fulfilling your criteria. And so I would just uh, try to keep that as the uh, consistent approach that we have. I think it would be very artificial for us to restructure projects we said that we decided on that back when we did redid the the life cycle that we were never going to move a project backwards in the life cycle and doing something like that here would be analogous to to changing that policy i also think that we have revisited this this topic a few times in the past and i think one of the inefficiencies for the tsc is revisiting things that will always be gray areas because we don't have a lot of other topics in front of us to address. And so we can also just consider meeting less frequently rather than uh, continuing to spend time on things that will always be gray areas. And that's my piece. Okay, I, I really don't think we are discussing this because we had nothing else and I came up with this, but I... Chris is next. <clears throat> it's been so long I forgot what I wanted to say. Um, on, the, on the point that I think you were making about, you know, whether or not a, uh, a set of maintainers would actually want to pick up and take on responsibility for some, um, sub, you know, some, some sub project, if you will. Again, I don't know what we want to call these things, but I, I think that's, that's key. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's something to be said for, well, but who's really the maintainer, right? You know, is, is there just fabric maintainers or are there fabric, you know, uh, explorer maintainers? You know, I, I, again, I think it's, it's fairly flexible as to how different parts of a project want to, to be managed, um, especially in the context of, you know, the blockchain space. There's distributed computing, there's crypto, there's, you know, so many, there's front end, there's back end, there's all kinds of crazy stuff um, that make up a project's, you know, and uh, a landscape. And, and, and so in, in that regard, I, I'm, I'm less concerned about whether or not there's a project that isn't sort of living up to its, well, it wanted to be independent right um uh, and and sort of you know have applicability to multiple things because again and we talked about this in the past we had the example of of uh, composer and composer i think had the right uh mindset going in that they're happy to have multiple back ends but that didn't mean that they were going to build them right that really meant that if somebody's really interested in having a composer front end they need to build the plug in that lets that happen um, and it didn't happen. And I think that's sort of the same thing with like uh, Explorer. Um, you know, I think there's interest on the part of the Explorer uh, engineers, primarily DTCC and Fujitsu, if I'm not mistaken, 
um, to have that integrated with fabric, but you know, whether it does Sawtooth or whatever, given that Sawtooth had its own dashboard, um, uh, you know, again, it's, it's one of those things. I think they had the right mindset going in. That doesn't mean we change anything. We don't take them out of active or, you know, don't let them not, you know, don't let them, uh, don't prevent them from going into active status. Um, uh, you know, maybe they changed their charter or something like that. I don't know. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I think it's more important that a project be, you know, uh, showing some signs of life than anything else about, you know, whether it's associated with this or that or the other. All right. Thank you, Chris. Dave? Yeah, so I apologize if the conversation has drifted away from this. Brian mentioned about cost. Um, obviously, top-level projects are the only ones that can trigger security audits and um, promoted releases. So if something that started out as a top-level project, say like Ursa, and then it doesn't meet the criteria of being cross-platform or whatever, and it starts to be moved, let's say, back under Indies and Aries because nobody else is using it, um, that, that may be, that may affect something, right? Like, because Ursa definitely wants to be audited at some point. Um, and if it gets put back on as a, as a sub project, the maintainers of that project would kind of basically lose the ability to trigger that, or I guess they would be part of the bigger project. I don't know. I'm just, I just wanted to point out that there are some like costs associated with top level projects that are significant, um, and should be considered. Um, when we're going to change status like this. Yeah, but so that's the reason to want to revisit this status, right? Oh, the status quo. That's correct. Yep, that's correct, yeah. Okay, and, and you said Ursa in this case is used elsewhere. So, and, and again, one thing I want to clarify actually on this is, you know, I don't expect any of this to be automatically, you know, done. Uh, it would obviously be discussed with by the TSC and we would have to make a decision and there may be plenty of reason we say, yeah, for this and this reason, you know, somebody suggested we should uh, fold this project into another one, but there is all these other reasons we shouldn't. And there may just be one, but everybody's like, yeah, you're right. And so I, I want to reassure everybody, it's not like this is, you know, something that happens automatically and then there's nothing we can do. Everything gets discussed and we have to agree, you know, uh, as a whole, as a group, this is the right thing to do. So Tracy is next. Yeah, so I, I'm wondering um, if this discussion is uh, being caused for another reason, right? Like the, the root cause of our problem here isn't necessarily um, the fact that we want to combine projects or, or that sort of thing, it, it feels like there's the, the reason for these discussions are surrounded by um, two things that maybe we haven't solved for. One being the multitude of projects that's causing confusion for people as they come into the community. Uh, and then the second is um, whether or not activity is really occurring in these projects, right? Um, so should some of these projects actually be closed because there's no activity happening, um, which obviously I think is a very tough discussion that probably nobody wants to have because nobody wants to make that difficult decision of, you know, project X has to go away because there hasn't been any work on it in the last six months or whatever the case may be, right? Um, and so, you know, I think we've tried to do things around, the, around both of these. Um, issues and maybe we haven't solved it yet, right? I know these project reports were intended to figure out what was happening in the projects, right? Whether things were actually going on. Um, we do see a lot of these reports coming in late, uh, be that because we're not notifying them on time or be that because there's not actually work happening or somebody who's dedicated to this project anymore. Um, and, and, you know, we've also tried to, uh, you know, separate out into multiple areas, the greenhouse, right, of the different sorts of projects that exist and um, in, a, in an attempt to make it clear as to, to what you might want to look at as you come into the uh, community. So I, I, I'm just wondering, it, it feels like we, we come around to this conversation of projects, sub-projects, uh, we actually introduce labs, right, as a, another sort of level, 
um, is it that we're not solving what the real problem is and that's why we continue to have these discussions? That's it. All right, thank you. Nathan. Um, I like Tracy's thinking here around what are the tools that help us make the best decision? Um, in, in part, this is where I've struggled a lot with some of the projects that are very fabric specific. Um, not because they're not good projects, I think they're great projects, but as a TSC, I think we have fewer tools to deal with them effectively than the fabric maintainers do. You know, I, I have a hard time evaluating whether they're doing a good job of keeping up with the current stable release, for example, um, in terms of API compatibility with fabric. Whereas I think internally within the fabric maintainer community, that would be quite obvious. Um, and so having those managed as a sub project, I think helps keep them active and alive. And I think we would detect things like maintainership problems or maintenance problems faster if they were managed as sub projects. So I think for me, the question here is what is going to give us the best tools for these projects to be able to, to, to stay relevant and, and stay useful um, in addition to the marketing benefits and the other things that come um, to, to address Dave's uh, point. Um, we have a lot of sub components, especially in the Aries project. So things like, asking or triggering major releases or security audits get more difficult when you're doing sub projects. But I also think that uh, there's no reason we can't trigger security audits or trigger marketing releases and those sorts of things for sub components by staying up to date on what's going on as maintainers inside of uh, whatever the main framework project or the main master project, if you will, might be. So um, I think practically speaking, this gets to what makes this easier for us to get stuff done and collaborate? All right, thank you, Nathan. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, and, and in, in general, I do want to try to avoid myself or other hyperledger staff weighing in on a conversation that's really a TSC one, but I think there might be a point that some folks might not be comfortable talking about, um, uh, and, and so uh, um, maybe I can be helpful with that, which is um, I think there was a good faith effort on the part of certain fabric maintainers to engage with the transact maintainers um, to try to see if there is a way to combine efforts. And you know, part of it is that architecturally fabric and, and uh, sawtooth, uh, which is what transact has really been built for and derived from, um, uh, are very different architecturally, um, but despite some good conversations at the face-to-face -face, uh, meeting in Minnesota uh, around, yeah, let's work on this. I think there was a sense amongst some of those folks who engaged from the fabric side that they were kind of rebuffed or not taken uh, uh, seriously. Um, and I think that's why I think there is some question of good faith here, right? Um, is there a good faith intent to live up to the um, commitments that were a part of the approval of uh, Transact as a project in the first place, which I think I think we went more out on a ledge to take um, uh, intent into uh, uh, factor uh, in the project approval uh, than we normally would. Uh, and so I think that's, I mean, I know people are looking for underlying motives or that sort of thing, but I don't think it's that very down deep. I think it really is that sense that if a project's approval was based on a promise of something, you know, and that something is very subjective. Uh, how does the TSC um, come back to if that wasn't, you know, lived up to, right? Uh, as, a, as a measure of faith, not necessarily as a measure of outcome. Like it could be that good faith was, was there and present and, uh, um, and still, you know, transact was a single ledger kind of technology, even though it, the intent was to be multi-ledger um, or other people didn't show up. But I do think in this case, some people did attempt to show up and were rebuffed. And I think that is a, an argument or a, a premise by which a project could be encouraged to recombine um, you know, with, with, uh, with some other projects it was derived from or, or based on. I, I don't think that that's an accurate characterization. That's why I said I, I know some people would be comfortable, uncomfortable saying it out loud because you know they know it would trigger um, claims in the, in the response. And I, and you know, you can't help how someone feels, right? Um, or the impression they're left with when they walk away. Um, and it is subjective and it is going, that's, that's the harder part of managing a community is making these subjective calls for sure. But so I, I think, you know, um, without talking about maybe the emotional part of how people feel about these things or not, I think just from a technical point of view, uh, I think the Fabric team felt that Transact was a much bigger piece than what was expected initially from it. And it, may, it meant, I mean, incorporating it Fabric 
would have meant tearing apart a lot more out of fabric, which made the whole exercise a lot harder and and more you know more non obvious. So I, I think for that reason alone, it was felt that well that doesn't make sense for us to do that, and so it kind of stopped the you know it killed the interest that was initially in it. And and maybe there's a, something else that needs to be taken from this, which is you know. Um, for these kind of projects to really have a chance, I think they would need to be driven by more collaborative effort from the get-go so that, you know, you would know where to draw the line where it actually will work for different projects. In this case, we have a team from the sort of group that says, hey, we're going to extract our smart contract engine, generalize it, but, you know, they draw the line where they felt makes sense it didn't make sense for the fabric team. So maybe there's a lesson in that somewhere, but uh, I, I think we- I think that's uh, a much more accurate characterization. There was collaboration up front in putting the project proposal together. And when teams got face-to-face -face at the maintainer summit last fall, and they started digging the next layer deeper, it was clear that it was becoming more expensive on the fabric side. So I don't think there was any rebuffing. There was different prioritization happening within the, the fabric community from when we launched that project. And there was a different recognition of the level of effort. I don't think there was anything about uh, lack of genuine intent on anybody's behalf. I think that's fine. We can leave it at this. And I, I, I want to, I don't want us to drill too deep into the specific transact issue. And because what I said earlier, right, when I was talking about having a policy uh, along the lines of what I was talking about, I said there may be diff many different reasons why things don't pan out the way they were planned, right? And so, I, you know, bad faith may be one, Brian. I don't know that there's, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to, to, to point that out onto any of the situations, uh, you know, uh, put that on into any of the situations we have faced so far. It doesn't really matter to me at the end of the day. And, I, and this is why I think it only makes sense if we can come up with some kind of policy where we have fairly, you know, objective criteria we can use. Uh, just like we have for, you know, the life cycle for moving from incubation to active status and so on. So. I, I think if we have to rely on this kind of more subjective matter, it's going to be very hard to implement and there's a maybe not so, this may not be so useful. So there are a few people we haven't heard of, uh, heard from. Uh, Gary, for instance, is Gary there? I don't see him anymore. Is he dropped off? And, you know, I'm also interested in people that, you know, Dano has experience in the Ethereum community. Uh, I know he's not a TSC member, but um, sure. I mean, I I don't mean not to hear from anyone. I mean, if other people have comments, please speak up. So, I'll speak up here. So we seem to have this sub project discussion about once every six months uh, since the beginning of the TSC. Um, and I guess I'm just curious at this point. Uh, so, so this would be a change. Um, from what we have sort of thought as a TSC collectively over the past. And I guess I'm just curious what has, uh, what has made people change their minds or, or think we want to move in a different direction. And I think if we can pinpoint this, then maybe we can sort of figure out uh, the best action to take. So well, I mean, you need to clarify a little bit what you're saying, Hart, because I don't know why you think it's so different from what we've, and, and, and again, I mean, what we've talked about when it comes to top projects, sub projects, was to have some kind of formal, officially recognized hierarchy of projects, which is not what's being discussed today, okay? Uh, what's being discussed is whether top level projects can be rescinded and under which condition they would be uh, uh, moved into a, an exist, another project, basically. And how it's structured internally in that project is irrelevant to this discussion, in my opinion. Sure, yeah, I understand. So, Nathan, go ahead. When we look at the Hyperledger website, we have distributed ledgers, domain specific, libraries, and tools. 
underneath used and you know um when we go into each of them there's a whole bunch of things there that from an outsider's perspective look like they're whole different projects that are unique or very different from one another i i think we've been very um hesitant um, to make a strong decision or a strong stand about projects like explorer or you know um composer was one that was like this before and i think um, you know, Composer is a good example of a project that drove a lot of user adoption. And I think having it as its own standalone loan project during the time when it was doing quite well, I think was a very positive thing for our community. Um, and then we have projects like Explorer that, you know, I, I know that there's active maintainers there. They, they have had some struggles recruiting and some struggles trying to figure out how it evolved as fabric has evolved, where I don't know if it's really a, a standalone project or not. And being not as active inside of the fabric community, it's hard for me to make that that call. And I'm looking for a way for us to, to have a, a clear set of questions that we can ask, whether it's part of the project reports or pro part of you know our review of this portfolio to say, this is where this belongs to help clarify how this works. Because um, you know we, we've looked at things like Caliper and Explorer from an uh, Hyperledger Indie standpoint, and their requirements are very different than what we need. And there's no reason for us to kind of prosecute or persecute those projects because of that. Um, but, you know, at the same time, if we folded some of those things inside of whatever framework is the one that's the majority use case for them, it does clarify things for people who come to the project looking for, you know, Indian Aries things. If there's not, you know, 30 things to, to, to churn through, if the, the, the taxonomy or the hierarchy is is more clear about when and where a tool is applicable, um, and so I'm I'm looking for a question we can maybe add to the project report or a question we can ask to say, is this thing really part of one of the frameworks or is this thing its own standalone thing? Because um, I mean clearly, something like Ursa is a library that's kind of a standalone thing. Anyone can pick it up and use it. Um, and then also something like Composer, I think it would, uh, it would be a good thing for us to promote things like Composer to be their own projects. Um, so what are the, are there three or four questions we can ask that help us have that conversation? It doesn't matter to me if the conversation is clear cut. It matters to me that there's a template that we can follow to make sure the questions are asked in a way that's fair. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. And I'll follow up on that by saying, I, you know, for that matter, I really feel like we've given Explore plenty of time to support different frameworks. They just don't. At the same time, you have things like Sawtooth. They have their own Explorer that are part of Sawtooth. So it's like, well, if I'm a user, I go there, I say, oh, Hyperledger Explorer, here is the tool I need. And, oh, it doesn't work for Sawtooth. Oh, but Sawtooth has its own Explorer. It's, and why are we doing this? If Explorer really supports Fabric and only Fabric, might as well be part of Fabric. And then each project has its own Explorer, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. So I, I do, I also, I guess Nathan and I both see the value in simplifying the number of projects that we're presenting people. And I heard Dan didn't feel like this was, you know, worth driving the, uh, any kind of reorg. I disagree with this. I suppose the website could be designed differently to make that more easy to navigate, but I don't know why our organization wouldn't represent this. Who haven't we heard from? Anybody else wants to chime in? Can you hear me, Arno? Yes, Mark, go yeah. ahead. Um, I sort of agree with the last few points made. Um, but, you know, instead of using it to look backwards, let's use it to look forwards. What happens when we get more Ethereum type projects coming in? Do we decide if they go under BASU or if they're standalone? You know, how do we move forward with things coming in? Um, you know, what are the questions we should ask? Things of that nature. Um, and then maybe if we figure that out, we can turn it around and, and apply it to things that we already have and see if they fit. Right. Yes, I think the, the key there is dependency, right? Is there a dependency or not? Right. I mean, if someone comes in and says, I want to build this widget and it will work with anything as long, you know, we're going to design it to work with fabric and 
but it should in theory work with anything as long as the other projects write their own their own plugin for it um, you know is that a good or a bad thing how does how does caliper do it you know caliper seems to be a cross project thing that works well you know so what do they yes. do that's working well, I mean, they ask people who are motivated to actually support different frameworks. So they actually do the work. But, and again, this is not about blaming anyone not to do this for their projects. It's just, you know, acknowledging that that's the case. In some cases, you have a community that says, yeah, I want to support all these different frameworks. And it makes complete sense not to have them be tied to a specific project. On the other hand, if it just is, then why not acknowledging it? So I, I think that's really the key point in my opinion. If I, if I might to answer something that was asked a little bit earlier, um, there were several times where uh, we did try to have some sort of simplification to the website so that people could make decisions, people outside the project could make decisions about which project was interesting or useful to them. And uh, that, never turned out well um, because you know all blockchains are good for everything and yeah. so it, it, trying to even provide a list of discriminators has turned into a very difficult discussion in the past and I, I'm certainly willing to 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 watch you guys revisit it um, because I think it would be valuable to the community to to be able to discriminate more carefully but I think if we're going to talk about reorging the website and all that, that is just, I think that is just a symptom. I don't think that's really, you know, the problem. Okay. All right, thank you for that input. So if there isn't any other comments, I, what, what I would like to do is have a straw poll. This is not a vote, right? It's just, to me, what matters now is to know whether we should keep pushing into developing a policy that would address the, the question at hand or not, right? I don't want to spend more time discussing it if at the end of the day, the majority of people are saying, now we're not going to do this anyway. I personally, I'm willing to put the effort into drafting a policy that we could try to hash out and, and see if it actually can stick, but I don't want to do it if, you know, there isn't uh, enough support to make it worthwhile. So could I have a show of hands for the, uh, whether this is worth pursuing or not? Uh, I don't know how we do this. Uh, there is a, everyone does have a thumbs up, thumbs down, yes, no. Oh, yes. Yeah, let's make use of that Zoom meeting thing. Yeah. yeah, there is yes and no. Should we continue? Click yes or no. Continue or oh, nothing. If you, I'm sorry? Continue what? The discussion or trying to figure if, I mean, are we talking specifically transact, which spawn? No, no, I'm not talking specifically transact. Again, I, I've been trying to stay away, even though transact triggered this discussion. I'm trying to see if we can have a policy that would be applicable. And then it would be natural probably to have transact looked at it from that angle, but that's, that's, a, that's a separate step in my mind. We're talking about whether we should have a policy that will address the issue we've been discussing. And, 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 you know, again, I'm not talking about approving a policy because we don't have a policy to look at yet. It's whether we should spend more time discussing this, meaning I would draft a policy, we could discuss it, comment it and not, and whatnot, it's towards eventually a vote, yes or no. But if right now there's a major of people saying we shouldn't do this, then I don't want to spend more time. So that's what I'm trying to gather. So one thing that sort of hasn't been really brought up is we haven't really talked about, we haven't talked to the maintainers of some of the projects we're talking about, like maybe why they want a separate project or why they maybe they don't care um, but I mean it, it, it would be useful to have their input in, in any kind of discussion like this. That's a good point so that's something we should probably do if we continue this discussion is you know bring in some maintainers asking them 
you know, what's their view on this? And again, I mean, you know, if, if this were ever to come, uh, we would definitely include the maintainer of the project that we would be considered to, you know, to, to reorganize based on that, uh, on that policy anyway, right? We couldn't possibly do that without their input. So there are a lot of people who have not voted either way. Tracy, Troy, Nathan, Hart. Yeah, Angelo. Yeah, I, I don't know how to vote, Arno. Um, All right. You know, I think, I think there does need to be cleanup, but at the same time, like, I just don't know where this is going to go. And so it feels um, like until I know what this is going to look like, I... <laughs> It's hard to say, yes, we should go forward. Um, yeah, but so let me put it another way. If, if we have more people voting no now, we stop discussing this issue, move on. Yeah. If you want to, if you think this is worth investing, in, investing more for the TSD time in it, then you should vote yes. That's all I'm asking at this point. Yeah, I still don't know. Okay, sorry. I tried no, to make it okay. easy for you. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, that's where I'm at. So I wish right. there was like a maybe. Right? <laughs> There's no maybe. So <laughs> I know I was looking. Is there an option for like abstain? But there is that. I guess you could put the the away or I'm taking a break. <laughs> Need a break. Oh, that's what it is. This is coffee cup. There we go. Should we consider the possibility that there's just not enough data to really? get a formal policy. I mean, we have one instance with Transact, which is a very specific case. Are we making a generalized policy too early? Well, I, this is an interesting point. I agree. I mean, we would have to kind of, you know, try to test it out at least mentally. You know, does that make sense? What does that buy us? Um, I, I would come back with a rebuttal, though. No, we've had this problem since almost the beginning of Hyperledger and I think we just, we haven't been willing to make a stand on it more so than, because I think clearly we have this problem where there are things that are not standalone projects. We've labeled as standalone projects. Okay. All right. So I agree. I, I mean, I do think we, we, you know, it is easier to agree on approving things than, than rejecting things or kind of, you know, rescinding things in any specific way that can be seen as negative. And, and unfortunately, I think at some point, you know, we need to step up to that and then say, okay, you know, it may not be so nice to do, but this is what we have to do here. And, uh, and so I, I think we, we have, I mean, some of us have been around for since the beginning. I've seen this and, and know that we are going to have to get there. And, you know, it was discussed earlier that there may be other cases where we have to just say, you know what, you just don't leave to the expectation and, you know, we should shut down your project, whatever that, you know, the exact uh, way we do this is. So, all right. But so thank you all for your input. I see, you know, there's the majority of people in favor of continuing this. So, uh, we will do so. I don't know that we necessarily need to have more call uh, time on this for now, but uh, I am interested in trying to write down a policy that I think would make sense and uh, to put it before you guys to look at and comment and trash out if this might be <laughs> I'm not offended. And so then we can see how that goes. And if it makes sense, you know, have more discussion at some point down the line. Okay. I think that's about it. I'm glad we had this discussion. Thank you all for participating. Is there anything else anyone wants to bring up now or we can close on this? All right, hearing none, I will take this as a sign that we can close. So I will call the meeting adjourned.